Today, we will be looking at pictures of ducks, and then we will- Sorry to interrupt, but I have returned, and today we will actually learn how I returned using Piper. Well, I am pretty excited about this. This voice kind of sounds like the other voice, and it generates very fast because it is using Piper. Today, I will show the process I used to create this voice and add it to this Piper TTS UI. If we look at the top, we see there is a new drop-down called Custom. There is where I can select from custom voices that I have created for Piper. I do notice that this voice contains some, as they call it, artifacts and distortions. I created this voice with only 9 clips that were about 5 to 10 seconds in length, and it is fine-tuned from an existing voice rather than a new voice from scratch. I could use more clips and have an overall longer duration and create a new voice from scratch with that to get better quality. Anyways, let's get started with the process. Here is the folder with the audio clips. These are very short clips that I randomly took from audio I used in a previous video. For today's tests, this is the input. I tried to find different types. This one is a very short 4 second HD close up of the face. I just randomly picked some short clips for this test. At some point I would gather a lot more high quality clips and fine tune or train again for better quality. Here is a transcript file which is required by Piper. It basically contains the folder name and file name, followed by a vertical pipeline symbol and then the text that is spoken by the audio. It also requires a specific format for the audio file, so I used Audacity to convert the audio files. I first drag and drop the original MP3 file into Audacity, then go to File and Export Audio. For the sample rate, I selected 22,050 Hz. For the encoding, sign 16-bit PCM. For the channels, select mono. For this example, I will change the folder name to the desktop so it generates the WAV file on the desktop. And change the file name to a temporary name for this example. And then click export to generate the WAV file. And here is the final WAV file. I did this manually for all 9 clips for this test voice. When I do it with more clips, I will automate this process. Next, I will upload the WAV files to my Google Drive. I created a WAV zip file which contains the folder with all 9 WAV files. I am going to just drag and drop the zip file to my Google Drive. Once that is done, we can begin the training process. Go to the Piper GitHub page and go into the Notebooks folder. Then click the Piper Multilingual Training Notebook and click the Open in Colab link. This notebook will do the actual training of the voice using our audio clips and transcript. Run the first cell for the anti-disconnect. The next cell will check the existence of the GPU. Then we need to mount our Google Drive. On the left we will see the drive folder appear in the folder view once the drive is mounted. Then we install the software. This part can take a while. Once it finishes, you can see the output. And for me, there were messages in red about PIP dependency resolver. We ignore those and move on. Next, we extract the dataset. This mentions the details about the requirements of the input audio files and that they need to be numbered and in that format. We already did all that. This zip path already matches the path where the zip was uploaded. I just changed it to a lowercase for the file name. And then we can run this cell. Next, we upload the transcript file. Here it mentions the format the transcript file needs to be in. We have already created our transcript file which has this information for each audio file in this format. I will go ahead and run this cell. Throw down and there will be a browse button where we can select the transcript file. Did you mean to say scroll down? Because it kind of sounded like you said throw down. Oh hush, Alba. Anyways, moving on to the next cell. For the language, I will select English British. I am going to leave the rest of these as default for model name, output path, dataset format, single speaker, sample rate, and resample. Let's click the run button for this cell. It has finished. Let's move on to the settings next. There is a lot of information here about how to continue training and convert single speaker model to multi-speaker, and so forth. I am going to change the action dropdown from fine-tune to train from scratch. I will leave the batch size to the default 12. For the quality, I will select high, because why not? The rest of these settings I am going to leave default for this test. Let's click the run button for this cell. Well, I don't think that is a good idea. It says you need at least 8 hours of audio, and you have less than 50 seconds of total audio. Oh fine, very well. It looks like I won't be training from scratch. Ideally, you would want more than 50 seconds of total audio to even fine-tune it. The voice you are currently hearing was fine-tuned on less than 50 seconds of total audio, so there will be some artifacts and distortions and such as we have heard during this video.
Now we get an error saying there is no pre-trained model we can fine-tune for the English-British language, so we will need to select English-US for the language. I am going to go back to step 3 and change the language drop-down value, and then rerun this cell. And then let's go back to step 4 and rerun this cell for the settings again. This time it worked. If we scroll down, we can select which pre-trained model we want to fine-tune. These are the English-US models available. I am going to use the Piper UI app and have a listen for each one and see which one I want to use. Let's listen to Arctic first. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Let's listen to Joe next. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Let's listen to Kuzo. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. L2 Arctic next. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Laysack high quality. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. Library TTS. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. I think I like the Laysack high quality. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be out here. I should be in school on the other side of the ocean. I will just go ahead and select this one to use as the pre-trained model to fine-tune with my less than 50 seconds of audio. Once the pre-trained model is finished downloading, we can begin the actual training. We can simply click the run for the train cell and it will begin the training process. For this test, I let it train for two hours. Ideally, you would want to have much more high-quality audio samples that is longer than 50 seconds and train for longer if needed. But for this test, I am going to just use the 50 seconds of audio trained for two hours. It will print out this debug message the entire time during the training, and I think the max epochs were set to 1000, so I am not sure how long that equates to, but you can click stop once you want to stop the training. It will keep a checkpoint file for the iteration specified in the settings and use it next time in case you want to resume the training later. It has now been two hours, so I am going to stop the training. It will take a while to stop and to finalize the last checkpoint file. Here is that last checkpoint file on the Google Drive it was referencing in all of those debug messages. You can leave this here and reuse it later in case you want to continue training where you left off. But I am just going to go ahead and download it. It is nearly one gigabyte. There is also a corresponding JSON file. Let's go to it. Keep going up one folder until you get to the folder where the config JSON file is. You can leave this here too. But I am just going to go ahead and download this one too. And now we are done with training. Next, before I export to the Onyx format, I am going to run this inference notebook to test this last checkpoint out. But first, I am going to disconnect and delete the runtime from the training notebook before going to the inference notebook. In the inference notebook, we can generate audio. This notebook is optional, but I want to try it out anyways to see how it works. I am going to check the use GPU for the first step. Also, I will change the runtime to use GPU explicitly through the settings as well. Your voice sounds a bit shaky. Are you feeling okay? Oh, I am fine. I was created with less than 50 seconds of audio. My voice is fine. This is fine. Let's go ahead and click the run cell for the install. Installing the required components. One moment, please. Well, that was unexpected. The notebook is talking to us. This one also had the same red pip dependency error messages that we ignore. Next, we download the model and config. Here we will just need to copy-paste the URLs for the last checkpoint and config JSON. In the Google Drive, I will go into the Piper folder. And in test, there is the config JSON file. Click on Share. Change from restricted to anyone with the link and then click on Done. You can copy the link from here, but I forgot to do that. So I will just click on the three dots, select Share and then copy link. Go back to the Google Colab and paste it in the URL of the config JSON file box. Back in the Google Drive, go into Lightning Logs, version 0, and Checkpoints. And do the same for the last checkpoint file. First make it shareable with the link. Select anyone with the link and click Done. And then click on the three dots and go to Share and Copy Link. Back in the Google Colab, paste that link in the model link box. And then let's run this cell to download the model and config. Downloading Voice Package the notebook's voice sounds friendlier than yours, in my opinion. How incredibly rude. And now we have three different AI voices in one video. What madness. The voice package has been downloaded. And finally, it is time for inference. Let's run this cell. It is pronounced inference. You put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. 
interface opened. Write your texts, configure the different synthesis options for download all the voices you want. Enjoy. Great, and now we are done with inference. That sounds good enough for this test. Inference. Inference. Close enough. Now we can go on to the third notebook to export the model as an Onyx file. Remember to disconnect and delete this runtime first. In this notebook, it will export the model and create the Onyx file from the input checkpoint file. Run the first cell to install the software. Once it finishes, ignore any red dependency errors and scroll down to the next cell. Here, just like last time, we paste the link to the model and the JSON, so we go to the Google Drive and click on the three dots next to the model and next to the JSON files and click copy link for each and paste each in the Google Colab in the corresponding boxes. I am going to leave the language as it is, and also leave the voice name as it is, but will change the quality to high. I am not sure if that affects the process or if it is just for the output file name. I will leave the right model card as unchecked and then let's run this cell. Why does this message say downloading model and his config? Starting the process. This may take up to two minutes. We will notify you when everything is ready. That is a pretty nice voice you have there, notebook. Once that finishes, I will select the option to download the voice package on my device from this export mode dropdown, and then run the cell to start the download. This might take a while. Once it finishes, it should have downloaded a file that you can extract with 7-Zip. If you don't have 7-Zip, it is a free app you can download. Just Google 7-Zip. You can select Extract here or Extract to a folder with that name mentioned. I chose the folder, so let's go in the new folder and extract this TAR file here. This will give us the Onyx file and the JSON file for our model that we can now use with Piper TTS. In the folder where the Piper UI is for me, I am going to create a new folder called Custom, and I will move the Onyx and JSON files into this folder. I will actually just copy-paste it. The UI has a new dropdown that reads Onyx files in this custom folder. The Onyx and JSON file names have to match, so I am going to change the name of both to my name so that it is more user-friendly when seen in the dropdown. Now if I go back and launch the UI, I should see my name in the new dropdown. I am going to go ahead and select it and enter some text in the prompt. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school, on the other side of the ocean. If I were to select values for the language, voice, and quality dropdowns while there is a value selected for the custom dropdown, it will prioritize the custom voice value over the built-in ones and generate using the custom voice. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school, on the other side of the ocean. I can click on clear to unselect the custom voice. Now if I generate, it will use the selected Alba's voice. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school, on the other side of the ocean. I have merged the updated code to GitHub and created a new release package with the updated files with the new custom dropdown. So I just wanted to show the process I am using with the Google Colab notebooks to train or fine-tune a voice. I will probably be playing around with that some more and writing an automation script to auto-create the WAV files in the appropriate format from input audio files and auto-transcribe the audio and format it into the transcript text file that Piper requires so that I can train a voice from scratch. Also would probably want to train it for a longer time for better results. Where do you find the time to breathe when talking non-stop like that? Anyways, back to staring at duck pictures. Ducks?